Thomas is our youngest child. He's uh, a little over two years old. But when he was about three or four weeks old, we started noticing that he was having some, some odd, erratic types of behavior. We pointed these out to his pediatrician. Just some um, clenching, just some random movements that we don't recall our, our other children having. So, um, and luckily he did end up having one of these seizures while we were at a, just a checkup with his doctor, with the pediatrician, his six week checkup. And um, that's when I think she suspected seizures and got us a quick appointment at Children's. Even being a, a novice like I am at re looking at these things, I knew right away, we both did, that something was bad wrong with the, the readout. We shortly came to find out that uh, half of Thomas's brain was, uh, was abnormal and something had to be done, something drastic had to be done quickly. The doctor we were dealing with at the time was a, um, a neurosurgery, uh, or neuro neurology um, in training, and she was Filipino. Her, her English wasn't real good. And I'll never forget, she came over to a computer screen and sat us down to show, him that, show us his MRI and said, you see how one half brain larger than other half? And we could see that. She said, we cut it out. I said, you, you cut out a section of his brain? She goes, no, we cut out the whole half of his brain. <laughs> so we were floored when we heard that news. We couldn't believe this lady was telling us they're gonna remove half our child's brain. This is a child who two days prior we thought was normal and healthy. You know, I remember thinking our child is, is never gonna know his name. He's never gonna walk. He's never gonna talk. He's gonna lay in his bed his entire life and, and waste away. Um, and do we do we even have the surgery? Like, I mean, or do we just let him continue like he is and and see what happens? I mean, we can't we cannot remove half of his brain and just have him lay there the rest of his life. We were told over and over again: the earlier you do this, the better. Well, our research found that no child in the United States had ever had this surgery done this early. He was seven weeks old. Most kids have it done it three, four, five years old. The surgery carried a high mortality rate. We didn't know what to expect. So I think my colleague and I were on the same page uh, the day before, or a couple days before the surgery, when he called me and said, Stuart, what do you think about baptizing Thomas uh, the day before the, top, before the surgery? I said, you read my mind. <laughs> when Chris and I were in the pre-op room and they asked for us to hand Thomas over to them to take him to surgery, knowing what the mortality rates are on this surgery and how small and frail he was. Um, I got a sense of what Abraham felt like when he put Isaac up on the altar to sacrifice him. Um, that was a tough, tough moment. It was hard, a lot of, a lot of tears, but um... A lot of people there to help, um, to help get over it, and a lot of nurses there, just specifically, I think, just for us. I mean, they were they were there just just to help deal with our emotions at that time. But it was it was hard. But um, once you get past that that minute of okay, he's I've I've given him to them, and um, that's all I can do, and and it's not in our hands anymore, and. You just um, kind of, kind of have a sense of peace. You have to to get to get through it. I think God put people in our in our lives and surrounded us to give us that sense of peace. I mean, everything from this the doctor that performed the surgery is one of 14 in the United States. He's right here in our backyard, and he's one of the best. Our friends, our family, our, our church members here that, that rallied behind us and supported us and lifted us up. We felt all that and it, that helped give us the peace that we had to have to get through this marathon surgery he was about to go through with unknown, with an unknown outcome. And I don't, I, lo I look around and, and I think, I don't know how people do it without friends and family in church. I don't know how they do it. I don't, I don't think we could have, I really don't. It was amazing.
So after about eight hours, we got him back. They, we saw him as they wheeled him out of the operating room to the ICU, and uh, we were ecstatic that he had made it through it. The, the staff there at the, the Children's Hospital are God sent. Um, I'm convinced of that. They, they were put there for a reason. These people um, have a genuine love for these children and um, took care of them, took care of us, and, uh, and Thomas just thrived. So after about three weeks, he was able to go home. There was not a day that we were in the hospital when somebody from the church was not there with us, and we were there for a long time. Um, that was just why we were in the hospital. Of course, I mean, they're still there every single day for us, and it's been two years. Um, they are everything. I mean, we couldn't have done it without them. We still can't do it without them. I mean, they help us with therapy. They help us with doctor's visits. They help us um, Sunday with school. meals and Sunday school and, I mean, literally everything. It's hard to put it in words. Made my relationship with Jesus more more personal. I've seen how he's there. I've felt him there every step of the way. I look at our life with Thomas and I think he has provided our entire family with so much joy and so much love and the affection that our other children show on him and the love that he, even at age two, with his condition, the love that he can give back to them already is just phenomenal. I mean, he is, he is 100% in our eyes and, and, and in our other children's eyes. And I mean, what more could we ask for? He is such a blessing. Been such an inspiration to us already. And we're excited about what the future holds and uh, what you're gonna be able to do. And we, we love your nature. We love your, your, uh, your love for the rest of your family and uh, we're so glad to have you with us. We love you, gosh, we love you. We, you have so many people that love you, and we are so proud of you, so proud of you. You know, when we first got this news, I remember thinking, you know, we prayed for nine months for a healthy child. Um, we thought we had one for a few weeks. <laughs> and when we got the diagnosis, my selfish immediate reaction was, why me? Why us? Why did this happen to us? God, we prayed that this wouldn't happen. Why did it happen? This isn't fair. But it didn't take much time at all to see why this happened to us. And when you see some of the other children in ICU that are even worse off, with no support, with no family, um, you start realizing pretty quick, I see. This is, I'm here for a reason. Thomas is ours for a reason. And uh, he has been nothing but a blessing ever since.